what's going on YouTube? So I figured I would make a video today about why I sold my 2021 Honda Accord Sport 2.0T. Kind of a mouthful. So that car never even made it to my channel because I only had it for four months, which is crazy. Uh, so that car was supposed to be the replacement for my 2009 Dodge Charger RT with the road and track package, which uh, if you're a subscriber of me, you know that car well. So the reason why I bought the Accord um, is because of just all of the reviews I read online, all of the, of course, YouTube videos I saw of the car, and um, the it car just seemed to really fit exactly what I was looking for in a replacement uh, for the Charger, which was better fuel economy, still really good performance, lots of room, but again, I only had that car for four months, so I figured I would kind of clue you guys in into why I got rid of it and how it compares to this 2022 Hyundai Elantra N. We'll start with the main reason why I got rid of the Accord is the unbelievably terrible seat comfort. Now this one really, I mean, I just never thought this would be an issue being a Honda, but for whatever reason, the driver's seat in that car was just an absolute bear. Um, it felt like I was sitting on a metal bar, essentially. And I didn't realize it when I first bought the car until I started really going on longer trips with the car. Um, it was just unbearable, really, honestly. But it just felt like the seat cushion was super thin and really narrow and just did not fit my body. It was absolutely horrible. I could not get comfortable in that car. We actually took it on a road trip um, down to Florida uh, and it was just, I was uncomfortable the entire time. I tried adjusting that seat over and over and I just could never get it to feel right. And plus on top of it, uh, another thing with the Accord is they sacrificed some front leg room for rear leg room. And that me meant that, yeah, I just was, there was not a lot of room to stretch out in that car. Like everyone said, it's oh, such a spacious car. Not true. It is for the backseat passengers, but not for the front. So that was really my biggest gripe. And the main reason I got rid of that car, I just couldn't handle the, the seat anymore. It was terrible. But uh, I will say for the Hyundai Elantra N, these seats have proven to really be comfortable. I was really hesitant at first when I first bought the car because they are really well bolstered. And just being a bigger guy in general, um, I did feel pretty tight in the seats, but I'm at 3,500 miles now and they really feel like they've softened up a little bit and kind of broken in. And now um, um, they're just really comfortable. I just took the car on you know, a two and a half hour drive each way and I felt great the whole time. So I'm really, really happy with these seats. These seats look amazing too. It's not just uh, that they're comfortable, they look amazing. So uh, seat comfort in here is great and lots of leg room. I actually have my seat probably about three inches from the all the way furthest back position, uh, which just is too too far back for me and I'm 6'3". So lots of leg room in the, in the Elantra. So the other thing that I, I really uh, hated about the Accord was the infotainment system. And I know this isn't specific to Accords, this is a Honda thing, but that infotainment system would constantly black out. I would get a black screen uh, at least once a day. It would just, the screen would go black and it would take probably about 20 seconds of me pressing like the home button to finally get it to come back on. It was really weird. Uh, the other thing is it had wireless Apple CarPlay, but if I tried to use uh, Google Maps while playing music, it, the maps wouldn't work. It would just freeze up and I couldn't actually, it was just very frustrating. If I, we wanted to go somewhere and put in the, you know, put in the address, um, it just would, it would freeze up and it would be a big pain in the butt. Now the rest of the infotainment was, was pretty good. The radio absolutely sucked. But the rest of it was real intuitive as far as the menus go and stuff like that. But really, in all ways, this infotainment system in the Hyundai is just so much better than the Accord. Um, it does not come with wireless Apple CarPlay, but I just bought a, um, a wireless dongle for, I guess it was under $100, and it's been flawless. I can play my music and put in... Uh, the address to Google Maps and navigate the whole way and it's it's absolutely perfect. So 
uh, for you know 80 or 90 dollars it solved the wireless problem and like i said everything's better in it the radio is better the stereo is better in it the just the functionality and everything i just like the infotainment system better the other thing i'm going to talk about is the transmission and the accord uh, this is one this one is another one that just i i don't understand the reviews because so many people just said the 10 speed's amazing it's you know just this like, incredible transmission that transforms the car just regular casual driving it was herky-jerky and slow traffic it um it just felt like it was always hunting for the right gear and i just didn't like the transmission uh there were it kind of felt like it shuddered at times i did not like it um so that was a real disappointment this transmission in the hyundai elantra it's, i love absolutely love this transmission um in all driving conditions it's it's incredible uh hyundai really just yeah killed it with this transmission i love it uh, especially when you're hitting in end mode or you hit the EGS button, the, the, the quickness of it, uh, just, yeah, I can't rave enough about the transmission. I absolutely, absolutely love the DCT in here. Now I'm going to talk about the handling uh, of the Accord. So one of the things that I was really looking forward to uh, replacing the Charger was to have a car that handled really well. And the Accord did handle really good. I, I, I do have to say, for what it is being a you know a big midsize uh, sedan, it did have really good handling, um, leaps and bounds better than the Charger. So there's really no gripes as far as that go. That that you know that wasn't a reason why I got rid of the Accord, but you know comparing it to the Elantra N, I mean the Elantra N is just going to outhandle it no problem. Um, this car really, I mean, you know, really does feel like a track car for the street. Um, I know you can do a lot to the 10th gen Accord to really make it handle well, but this car's already set up for that. And, um, you know, this car, like I said, just really uh, leaps and bounds better handling wise. And it's straight from the factory like that. So, so I also want to talk about performance and kind of the fun factor. The Accord reviews all, you know, just really raved about, you know, how quick of a car it is. It's very deceiving. Uh, you don't, wouldn't expect a car like that to be fast. and. I 100% agree with that, and performance wasn't an issue. Um, it's not a reason I got rid of the car. The car actually, uh, that 2.0 in the Accord is an absolutely fantastic engine. Um, comparing it to the Elantra N 2.0, um, I would say that the Accord had, it had more low end torque. So, you know, just in slower speed situations, um, you know, taking off again, only in sport mode, all other modes absolutely sucked in that car. <laughs> Normal and eco were terrible. Um, but if you had it in sport mode and you gunned it, you know, from a dig that car, by the time it got to second gear, really felt like it was pulling hard. This car absolutely still feels like it's pulling hard. It just doesn't have as much of that low end torque. So it's just a different, uh, power delivery. So, um, you know, it is different in that sense. But yeah, that Honda engine was really good. And I, and I really looked forward to modding it um, and really, you know, making it quicker. But that's another thing. This car, the Elantra N, is just so set up from the factory that there's like really nothing that I feel like I have to do. Uh, the exhaust is amazing. You know, the it, like I said, the, the performance of the engine is amazing. The transmission's amazing. The handling's amazing. So all of that money that I would have spent on the Accord to make it more fun, uh, really, this car just already has it. And so, you know, it's, um, they're about the same price, you know, so really, as far as that goes, you know, this car is way better of a value. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about was the looks. And now we're going to, again, we're getting into things that aren't the reason why I got rid of the Accord. I'm just kind of comparing it to the Elantra N. Uh, I really liked the way the Honda Accord looked. And it was uh, Sonic Gray Pearl, which is a very similar color to uh, Cyber Gray, which is what the Elantra N is. Um, I didn't love the back. The taillights are really kind of, you know, ugly. But the rest of the car really looked good. I love the wheels. Um, what I'll say is, and this is not me saying that I like the Accord better than the Elantra and the way it looks. I'll just say that the Accord was a little more grown up looking. And being, you know, in my 40s, you know, someone might look at this uh, launcher and think, man, this guy's having a midlife crisis. You know, it looks like a kick car because there are certain elements about it, like the red trim and all that, that make it look, um, you know, 
a little more youthful, we'll say. Uh, same, you know, same thing with the front grill, you know, the big grill. But, um, you know, being an owner of this car versus someone that's just seeing it, you know, that doesn't, isn't looking at it all day long, I've really grown to like the looks of it. Um, some of the things that are really like, you know, that these cars are so comparable and is, is the miles per gallon of the efficiency. Um, I'm averaging just under 28 miles per gallon uh, combined with this car, which is exactly what I was averaging with the Accord. So, you know, it'll get low 30s uh, to mid 30s on an all highway drive around town. You know, you're seeing like 24 or 25. So as far as gas mileage goes, it's a wash. Um, the only difference is this car does, you know, suggest you use 93. The Accord, I was running 87 because, you, you know, it, it doesn't really say we suggest you run 93 or 91 or higher or anything like that. So I was running 87. I did run a couple of gallons of 93 in it, uh, which I didn't feel a huge difference in it at all. So, um, you know, this is a little more costly to run, but uh, performance wise, it does have a little, it does have an advantage on the Accord. I think for sure this would take the Accord um, in a race. Some of the things that the Accord did better, um, ride comfort, the Accord, you know, the tuning on that Accord was just absolutely perfect. It's kind of a combination of sport and um, comfort. Now this car does have adaptive, or I'm sorry, adjustable suspension. So right now, like right now I'm in just regular, you know, standard mode or whatever they call it. And uh, it's definitely around town, you know, very comfortable, nothing crazy. My only gripe is on highway, on the highway, if you hit a, um, if you hit a pothole, or you know a big expansion joint that has a big dip in it um these 19s do crash a little bit over it i think it's also the tires just these being the, the michelin pilot sport 4s's are just the have a really stiff sidewall so um you know the ride quality in those situations is not as good as the accord around town totally fine and when you know you do want to make it feel like a track car you put it in end mode and it's just you know ridiculous um but again, the Accord was just a perfect blend. It didn't need any kind of adjustability. It was a perfect kind of just a, a perfect middle ground between the two. And that's what Honda does really well. And they, you know, they, they knocked it out of the park with that. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about is really the biggest downfall of this car for me compared to the Accord. And that's the, uh, the size of it. So just the room, the interior room um, in the Accord was just, it was, easily comparable to the Charger. It felt like a full-size car, even though it's a mid-size car. Uh, the trunk was bigger, the rear seat room was bigger. Um, it, you know, it had some more amenities in the back, like it had an armrest for the kids. You would think that that would come in all cars, but it's not in here. No cup holders back there. Uh, it had USB or and air vents that this car doesn't have. So just amenities in general and uh, for, the, for the back seat front, this is very, you know, very equal to the Accord as far as what it offers. Um, but as far as the back goes, yeah, more more comfort and amenities for the kids back there, you know, backseat riders. Um, and room-wise, yeah, just more room in the back. But again, this car has more room in the front. So we might call it a wash, but trunk-wise, the Accord um, had way more room in the trunk. So advantage to Accord, I guess, still. So, um, but in general, uh, like I said, the main reason I got rid of the Accord was the fact that uh, the seat comfort was just absolutely terrible. Um, the infotainment was the worst. And um, some of the other things I experienced in that car, which was really odd, was um, the car had remote start. If I had the car parked outside and on a hot day and I wanted to remote start it to get it to cool down inside, uh, the car wouldn't start uh, with the remote. And when I got in the car to start the car with the remote in my pocket, obviously, and to, uh, you know, to start it, I would get a check engine light. And um, that happened twice. Both times it was a hot day, like I said. And that was very frustrating. Um, I The only thing I can chalk it up to, it actually would say some kind of emissions problem. Um, the only thing I can chalk it up to is Honda batteries are absolutely terrible from the factory. So maybe the battery was getting a little weak. I know the battery is a major issue uh, for a lot of Accord owners. And so it's possible that's what was going on. But at that point, I was already over the car. The, like I said, the seat comfort was so bad. Um, and, you know, with the entertainment issue, me not liking the transmission, um, 
it just really added up to me not to me falling out of love with the car wanting to get rid of it as quick as i could and uh, that's where the elantra n came in so um those are really the those are the reasons why i ended up getting rid of the accord i still think it's an absolutely great car i think a six speed manual accord is probably like maybe that would have been better suited for me um or uh a touring model because they have the leather seats and maybe the leather seats are better constructed i really don't know i don't i'm still really just like it was such an odd time <laughs> in my life to be so frustrated with a car that I had just bought and thought was going to be the car i was going to have for the next 10 years or something um that i just i was like just so frustrated with it after you know again having my hopes set so high that it was going to be the perfect car for me so uh, I'm not bashing the Accord. I'm always going to be a Honda guy. I've had six or seven different Honda cars or, you know, even Honda motorcycle in the past. And they've all been awesome in their own way. Uh, but that car just had, there was just some kind of curse on that car. Uh, I also got a speeding ticket in that car that I haven't had a speeding ticket in over 10 years. So there's just, and a parking ticket. <laughs> so there was a lot of things that just happened that were like the perfect storm for me to not be happy with the car. Um, and that's how I ended up with the Elantra and which all things happen for a reason and align for a reason. I absolutely love this car. I've never had so much fun in a car before. And, um, you know, the other thing I will say too, is this car is so unique. I know that they're brand new. It's the first year that they've been out. So, you know, I've only seen a handful on the road, but I mean, there's so many 10th gen, gen Accords around. You but uh, to me, you know, that was just like, okay, this just, just feels more right for me. I love this car, like I said, um, and it's just been, yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. So there you go, guys, rambled on a lot, but I kind of wanted to compare the two cars and give you my insights on why I ended up with this. So there you go. Uh, hopefully I'll have some more contact coming up soon. Till then, peace out.